Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of Couch Potatoes. Um, I, that's the thing that I do. I whisper into the mic. Right. Uh, f- welcome, everybody, to episode 78 of Couch Potatoes. I know if you're watching this, you're probably like, oh, where's part two of the other episode? Um, you can wait for that. That'll come soon. It's, But I want to do this version of it because, you know, I, I think... It's time you finally see one of our faces because uh, it's been a minute, at least in 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 uh, what would you how to say like recently? Because I know a lot of our old stuff, you know, that's you know we're there, but I think it's time they see us in our most fresh appearance. As you can see, I look dusty. You know, I'm tired. Crusty. Crusty. I did shower though. I do shower every morning, so it's okay. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so today's a special episode with a very special guest, you know, help me out so I don't look lonely or sound sad. Like my other episodes that I appear alone. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, very, very special guest who I've known for some time now, who tends to hold things that are very major <laughs> in their life, in his life, oh and t- chooses to tell me in very, like, uh, in a very uh, manner. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Hector, woo! Yeah, but uh, well, yeah. In case you're wondering, why are we both wearing LA hats? Uh, I'm wearing it because my team LAFC is playing today, playing in the final, and Hector's wearing his. He's wearing his because he felt that I was gonna wear mine, so he decided to copy me. Right. Go along with it. But I think. Yeah, that's yeah. that's exactly it. But yeah, I like I like it's an LA hat. You look good. Yeah, yeah, I think we look Pretty good. Fresh. I mean, we could do a poll in the comments, like who were better, right. you know, like okay. GQ, People Magazine, who were better. Yeah. <clears throat> but man, it is good to see you, my friend. How have you been, sir? Same, Barry. I've been, uh, I've been pretty well. Can't complain, you know. Living life in the pandemic. Good as it gets. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like I'll forget for moments of yeah. the situation that we're in, and then. You just poop on the party like you did just now and go, we're in a pandemic. People are dying. Oh, no. It's so okay. sad. <laughs> right. It's like, oh. Okay. You're right. Right, right, right. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's good to see you because I think the last time we spoke, I was – okay, so I don't know if you've seen the other ones, but to the audience, uh, I've told them that I'm currently on a business trip searching for a new spot to plant the Cast Potatoes Studio 37 flag a new headquarters, a new studio space, mm-hmm. which is actually not totally a lie. This, this is actually very true. I'll explain to you after. I should explain before, but I'll explain to you after what I mean. Right. But um, so I'm here. I've been here for a while. I was supposed to go back sooner, but I decided to stay longer because, you know, there's new prospects, you know, that I've seen, that I've explored that, hey, maybe mm-hmm. maybe we can plant our flag here. Right. Um, but, yeah, so here I am. I was going to say something, and I just totally drifted out of my brain. But, but yeah, that's where I'm. That's where I'm at in life. Still on this trip. For those of you watching and listening, who've been keeping up, I'm still here. Still a little sad. But... Is this why you bring me on for it? <laughs> <laughs> just to, just say, listen to me. Like <laughs> so not like, a look. <laughs> you not this whole time. You're not gonna ask me any questions. You're just gonna keep going. Like. <laughs> It's like you're by yourself because you're just so used to it. You're just like, yeah, you know, I'm just so sad. <laughs> anyway, other things going on in my life. It's like, uh, bro, like I'm right here. You can talk to me. I know. I mean, yeah, no, that's okay. Honestly, I'll be honest with you because I did yeah. text you, right? You can attest. I right. did text you what, Monday? Right. Or was it? Yeah, it was Monday, right? At that no, morning. It was Monday. I yeah. was like, hey, bro. Um. What are you doing? Oh, okay. And actually, if you're watching this, the rest of the team. So I told them that I was going to shoot this on Sunday. And I told them maybe we should do it on Sunday. But I didn't mm-hmm. hit them up after because, to be honest, I was too tired and I knocked out. I was supposed to go bowling at a local area. You know, okay. we keep it safe, six feet different, you know, six feet, you know. I'm safe. I keep it safe. Right. And it's a little joy nobody goes to. So to bring it back. So if you're listening to this, the rest of the squad – um, it's not that I didn't want you in this episode. It's, you know, I know you got things to do, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to flesh this out. So then I hit up this freaking guy, 
because right. you know, he he owes me a lot. You know, he owes me. I don't a owe lot you a lot. Time. What do you? Yeah, what does you that know, even mean? It's because you know I kind of low key made you, bro. Like you know, once wow. you join the squad, you came in as as it's like wow. you know, oh hey, what's up, dude? With the with the cool, uh, I call them because well, you wore like shorts, right? But like jeans, yeah. you like folded them up. Jorts, You're, like jorts are yeah, even the, better. Sh- the jean shorts, shant, shants. How about that? Short yeah. pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if you want to get super specific, capris. You know, really high capris. capris. Um, no, so, capri- you know, okay. I guess capris then, because I was gonna say capris normally fit like at the on the shin, like above know. the ankle, but way yeah, below the knee. But I said it's just high capris, very high. Right, right, right. Um, right. but you know that was you, right? But after outlaws and everything, right. you're like, oh, it's that guy with the capris. That that's the guy. Wow. Okay. You know, right, right. I fought, I fought for you, bro. Like, I was like, we need this you guy. You fought for me, what? They weren't gonna, they weren't gonna get me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad I was. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, they were like, you guys were going through everyone, and then, like, you guys saw my video, and they were like, oh shit, this guy even auditioned. <laughs> he was, he was there the whole time. Oh, oh, oh he was I dancing. Mean, oh, <laughs> he didn't work at the gym. He was there for for this team. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, right, right. I see that. I see no, that. no, no. You were your first ballot, bro. I actually I can attest to this. I'm positive that when yours came up, uh well at least I know for me it was like, oh for sure. Because I had seen you. Oh, and then we'll tie in this. Uh, okay. when, the first moment I saw you and right. what I thought. And I think I might okay. have told you, but I, I'm not sure. But okay, so the first moment I saw you was at the it was like the basement downstairs, uh, dance studio, big. It was, mm-hmm. I think, one of the big rooms, one of right. the big rooms. And you were in there. You were with Michelle, if I'm correct. You guys were going over something, mm-hmm. and I was just coming in. But I think it was for practice, so I just wanted to do something by myself. Um, and <laughs> I saw you. I was like, you know, Sy- Syracuse. It's it's a big campus, but it's not like that big. Where it's right. like, oh, I need a freaking scooter to get across the campus, like my class. Right. But it, it's, it, I mean, it's large, but it's small enough that you, if you see the same faces, no, you'll see the same faces enough that you'll recognize them. And I recognize yeah. your face. And it's funny because I was like, oh, like, for, I don't know why I assumed you're always a year ahead. Like, if I was mm-hmm. a sophomore, you were junior. But, because, mm-hmm. I mean, you look at least 30. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere near. <my> okay. <laughs> no, but but you know, I'm serious. When I saw you, I was like, "Oh, like cool," because you're doing you did something quick, and I was like, "Oh, cool." And then you know, when I would pass by and I would see you guys and like races, like practicing and stuff, I would see you mm-hmm. in there, and I'm like, "Oh, shoot, he dancing." Um, and then I forgot. Oh, but I remember. The first time I think we ever interacted, just even a little bit, was when you came to the workshop. Yeah. Um, that Jubba 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 dance, whatever that was. I forgot what it was called. It was a Chris Brown song. A J choreographed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and what I wanted to tell you before, and is, if this sounds bad, then I'll cut it out. I don't know right. why, but when I first saw you, I assumed that you were, like, why? Hawaiian. Oh shit! No, no, definitely oh. not. Like Hawaiian, like Pacific Islander, or like wow. Asian, or like a mix okay. or something. Okay, that's a, <laughs> that's a first. Not gonna lie. What? Mm-hmm. Hawaiian. Uh, wow. Like. Yeah. All right. But for, at least for the like the, the I don't know. I feel like you were from an island or something. Right. <laughs> because I remember you you had a uh, you have like. What was it? tattoos right on was it your left or right leg? It was yeah. like uh, sea tur- or turtles, turtles, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know why. Some, oh, he must be like a surfer guy. Like he must be okay. like be at the beach all the time. So right. he must be from Hawaii. Okay. And then, I mean, the the last place I even assumed was L.A. Like, oh, no way he's from there. But then I saw your hat. I think it's that same hat. No, you've had that hat. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, maybe yeah. he is from L.A. That's why he's like, yeah, dude, I, I surf. And then we met, and I was like, oh, I'm way off. So I don't think I should tell him that I thought that. But now I'm telling you, <laughs> years after. Yeah. If I didn't Dude, no, you, you've never told me that before. That's funny. Yeah, I don't wow. know why. I, I guess it was the turtles. The turtles gave it away from me. I was like, okay. oh, he must be an okay. islander. 
Wow. When you spoke, I, I'm like, oh, he doesn't have an accent, so he's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's not bad, right? You know so no, that's pretty good. That's not, okay, that's pretty good. Right. You, know you know what's interesting about that, though, is, like, like, I've always had, like, a weird issue with, like, my own identity in terms of, like, race mm-hmm. and ethnicity, and it's because, mm-hmm. like, in L.A., or East L.A. specifically, you know, like, that divide between East L.A. and Boyle Heights, like, I have always been they've always told me I'm white passing, which is weird mm. because it's like, when I was in high school, I was, I was dark. Like I was brown, dark, like little bean. Right. So <laughs> going, <laughs> going ah! cute, I was always like, Oh, I guess I'm just like a white guy. And then I got there and I saw white guys and I was like, I look nothing like yeah, them. Yeah. And they were like, bro, you do not look like us, which is fine. Like I didn't want to. So then I've always belong. been like, <laughs> dude. So then that was my thing. It was like every time I see someone white, and I would like talk to them and like be like, okay, friends with them. Eventually, I would <clears throat> they would know that I'm not white, right? And then I would always tell them, I was like, do I look white to you? And they're like, no, dude, you 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 don't look white at all. And then it would be like, okay, cool. But then I'd I'd be like, with Jay or Amanda or you or anybody that, anybody that isn't white. They're all like, bro, we thought you were white the first time we saw you. Like, European white. I was like, really? yeah. So no one ever guesses I'm Mexican. Like, no one. <laughs> and you have, like, the furthest <laughs> guess ever. It's like a Hawaiian <laughs> Islander type vibe. So Asian funny. even. Mix, mixed Asian. Mixed like, Asian. Like, wow. Yeah, that's so that's, that's crazy. Wow. wow. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no it, it's weird and you know it's funny they said that because um i never forget this experience and i think you'll remember uh i won't go too into detail and if it's bad then you tell me to cut it out or not but i remember you and me went to like this house event with jay it was like a oh, may festival <laughs> and we went to a house and we went in and we we're like oh this is cool <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and we went from like wow this is cool to be here with jay to him just kind of darting yeah, and us standing that. in the kitchen like, yeah. and looking at each other like yo can we stay here like this yeah we do not belong it's like fish out of um, water. I was like, whoa bro and you know what dude that's so funny that you bring that up because i like suppress that <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> never, never you brought that shit out um but what I was going to say is, uh, that's the funny that you said that because I think in Syracuse, because we were so in like dance and like outlaws, Saises and all that stuff, I just got the assumption that everyone knew us. Like no one knew our names. No one like knew who we were or whatever, but they were like, yo, these people can dance. So like, regardless of what situation they're in, yeah, they like fit in. Right. Or they're going to do something that's like, yeah, that's okay. So like, I wanted to say like 70 to 80 percent of the time I would always feel like not as shy to go anywhere because people knew it they'd be like oh these are the outlaws or these are like two from Raices they about to like show up show out but when we got to that house I had never been more humbled in my life <laughs> they were like who are these two people coming in here not doing anything and we tr- i think i remember we tried to dance because jay was like oh just go out there like yeah somehow the and we well, were I like i think i know you did and i won't go into specifics but let's say you're trying to i think you're trying to do a, a, a partner type of dance and oh, then okay. you're there and then that individual is like slowly pushed away or something yeah yeah um, yeah i think oh was there something else but it I, I, it was something like that, but to the point where it was yeah. like we we shouldn't be here. We, we we shouldn't be here. I think we told Jay we were like, <laughs> yo, bro, we're gonna catch you. We're gonna go do anything else, yeah. but stay here. Yeah. <laughs> what? That, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because that was the exact same mentality I had, especially yeah. because on the team, like, or like I don't know. For some people tell me like when I don't have any facial hair, I look like a kid. So the yeah. thing is, in the group, everybody assumed, uh, if any, I mean, I was definitely one of the youngest, but like the baby, because they'd be yeah. like, oh, the boy who dances in front of him, but like the boy who does like crazy things all the time. 
So I was like yeah. that guy. In the beginning, I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. But as time passed, like, I'll never forget this experience. I think it was second semester when I first joined Outlaws, before it popped out. I was walking down the storm and – oh, down the storm. Down my hall, right, to my dorm. And yeah. on my floor, in my head, I'm like, okay, what do I have for me right now? Like, what do I have on this campus? Like, if anything, Outlaws. Like, some people have heard of us. There have been snippets. And at this point, some people on my floor knew I danced. Like, they knew about it. Especially because yeah. I think my roommate would tell them, oh, yeah, he's in, like, in a group or something. He's at practice, blah, blah. Um, and I'll never forget. Uh, you know, it's not maybe not totally key okay because I was in a relationship then. But every now and then, right. you know, like, I still like to impress the girls or whatever. Right now, I'll be honest. I'm, I like to impress them. Okay, okay. So there was, you know, some cute girls there. <laughs> I remember, I think, I'm pretty sure they were drunk because they came up to me. And to this mm-hmm. day, I joke about it because my homie and Bruce, he – Hopefully soon you guys can be in the same ep- in the same in the same episode together. But he'll attest to this where he'll clown me, and I'll tell him, "Yeah, this is how I felt." In the sense that they would tell me, "Like, oh, can you show us like a move, do a dance or something?" And I'll be like, "Okay, yeah, you know, me confident, or whatever." And I'll go down to bed laying, or lay down in bed like that night, and look up, and be like, "Wow, I'm like a little like you know those little dancing monkeys in the street." Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Exactly. That's what I felt yeah. like. Just like, oh, do a little dance, do a little dance, do a little dance. Yeah. Or like, bro, <laughs> you just hit him with the all, oh, and you're, yeah. you're like, oh my god, yeah, and then you're like, fuck yeah, like I'm so cool right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you go lay down and you're like, uh, what the fuck yeah. did I do that for? Like, wow, exactly. Yeah. It, that's it, that's how, yeah. <laughs> fuck. So uh, bad, so bad, so bad. <laughs> And I would remember the next day, again, this is why I assume they're because the next day they would pass by me and be like, oh, hey, like nothing. Yeah. Or like, or they just really, they, it was a moment of entertainment. And that's just girls like guys who like anybody who saw me to be like, whatever. And I was like, I would literally just entertain them for like five minutes. And, <laughs> and I expected like, to be like the guy, like on the, yeah. in the, in the floor, like, yeah, I'm that dude. <clears throat> Yeah, no. Oh, I remember yes. that. Oh my god, the wire, <laughs> dude! No, <laughs> I fucking like dug those memories away for a reason because it was mad awkward that that happened. Those yeah. moments. And you know, I would love to be able to say, "Oh, it just happened once or twice." It happened so many times. Yeah. Many, many, many times. Yeah, like I don't think I. I feel like. My freshman year, I knew I was, I was like, really awkward because, like, no one knew me. Sophomore mm-hmm. year got a little bit better because I was in Raices, and I think that's when I, like, second semester, that's when I joined you guys, or I had, like, done a workshop or something happened. And then junior year, I was officially, like, in both groups. So junior year was, like, popping. Like, everything was, like, there. Um, but yeah, sophomore year, I remember like when I got into Raices, I was still like weirded out by people like knowing me that like when people would be like, Hey, you're the dude that dances. I would be like, that's weird for you to say like, like, okay. Like everybody (laughs) dances on this campus. Like, who are you to say that? Right. And then like when I got to outlaws and I was doing that in my head, I was like, I'm that dude that dances. <laughs> oh, I'm so different. <laughs> uh, I hate myself. <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like, do, do you think we had more of those, like, I'm trying to remember, because I feel like I had, I had, like, a couple of those moments where because of who we were with, I had more confidence, but then when we got in there, I was like, it's not my thing. Like, did you, do you remember any of those? Do um, you have any more of those? I think, you know what? Um, I, I think it's a little bit of both. So I think, mm-hmm. I think who, or this for me, I'll speak for myself. I don't know if you relate. For myself, mm-hmm. what got me into the door was who I was with. What kept me in there was the confidence I got from being on Outlaws. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so me, myself, I'm not going to get in because nobody knows me, really. Yeah, they right. know I'm on Outlaws, maybe, but I'm not the head honcho. But they know yeah. this person and that person. So I'm with them, right, by uh, by association, so I'm going to get in. Yeah. But for me staying there, like, because the thing is, you can get in, 
but it's like I don't belong here. Like this is not my yeah. scene. But yeah. because of the confidence I gained from like, dude, I'm on Outlaws, bro. Like we're the only <laughs> hip hop group on campus, dude. But I was like, yeah, let's go. But yeah. it, but what made me realize like all that meant nothing. It's just a fleeting sense of like pride, maybe at most, was as soon as I came back home. Because when I came oh, back home, nobody yeah. gave a damn that I was on Outlaws. My friends yeah. don't give a damn that I was on Outlaws. Excuse my uh-huh. language for the young children listening to this. Nobody cared. I've cursed a lot, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. Really bad. But yeah, so yeah. it's like that humbled me in a sense when I didn't end up going back. I was like, and I guess maybe this is drastic, but this just shows you how much commitment I had to the group and how much of my character was was in line with the group and making it try to grow and blah, 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 mm-hmm. and the achievements that we could, the goals that we had set. Um, right. was I felt almost like nothing when I came back. Like, it was almost like uh, an identity crisis. Like, I was like, yeah. well, what do I do now? Because, yeah. I'm at, like, I, I guess I'll, I'll illustrate it on campus, right? I was doing a ride in my classes. Um, I had, a, I would think, a pretty great group of friends. Uh, I was on an amazing dance team. Were we the best, like, in the world or whatever? No, but it felt like it sometimes. Because we yeah. were popping. It got to a point where people, if they didn't know us by names, they knew us by association to that group. Yeah. Um, so I felt like I was somebody. I felt like, oh, my gosh, like almost kind of like that, that high school popularity feeling. Right. Uh, but, but multiply that by, by mm-hmm. more because of the size and the amount of people on that campus. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was here. And when I left and I couldn't go back, it was like, it was like a balloon just – and just – not even yeah. like a smooth, it was like when the balloon goes, <laughs> like a fart, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that's what it felt like. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so what I was going to say is, uh, so, like, I was, as you were talking, like, I was trying to remember, like, how it felt the first time I would eventually, like, get into those parties. Because, as you said, like, initially, the only reason I got in was because, I mean, you know, Raices was more like was more like females than males, right? It was always like barely have any males, but more females. Mm-hmm. So it's like if we were going anywhere, it'd be like you meet up with all the girls and then we Man. like group together and go. And so the only reason I got in was because of like the girls. And then once I got in, the only people would dance. The only reason people would dance with me is because they would see me dance with like the teammates, right? Oh. So then like after I started picking that up, at the beginning, that's all I would go for. I'd be like, all right, like mentally preparing myself, like, bro, you're gonna get into the party. It's gonna be mad awkward. Just grab a teammate, dance with them, and then everyone will know you can dance. Uh. And that's how like I eventually like started doing it. And so like sometimes when when we were first going out with outlaws or I was going out with outlaws, I didn't like I was so out of place because they weren't playing any Spanish music. And mm. normally, <laughs> that's where I thrive. Mm. <laughs> and now that it was just like hip hop, and like I wasn't listening to a lot of like hip hop music then, or like yeah. rap music then. It, it was just like Spanish music or like um, like top hits, right? So it's like when we go to like with J parties and like they're bumping off songs that I've never heard of, and I'm just there like fuck, like I'm so out of place, like. No one's dancing with me. I can only dance with guys because, like, those are the only people that want to hype me up. And that's, like, mad weird. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, mad weird. And then, like, yeah. So then I was, like, fuck. But, yeah, like, I had, I had like, the same feeling. Like, I would never get in. Like, I, I don't think I ever got into any party by myself now that I think about it. I don't think I ever did that. It was only, like, the only reason I got in or I even went in general to parties were because people were going and they invited me and they're like, Hey, you want to go? I'd be like, yeah. And they would get me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, but then, yeah, as you said, like, as I got back like to California or like, even, you know what it was too, is like, even when I left Syracuse and went to Pennsylvania, like I had stopped dancing. So then that whole identity of like, or whole, my whole like, illusion of conf- of confidence of like you're a dancer like you have mad confidence to be in places like went out the window because wow. like <laughs> i was like fuck like i don't know nobody no one knows me like 
they think that I can't dance and that's probably it, that, that no one's going to give me the chance. So it was like, anytime I would go to a bar or like to a club or anything, I would like always freak out because I was like, oh, like <laughs> yeah, this is going to be weird. But yeah. Be you just, you're in line and you're like, yeah, I'm on the list under Outlaws. And they're like, yeah. who? <laughs> Ooh, and you're like, oh fuck, they don't care. Like, yeah. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah, bro. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy, man, and it, it, it's wild because I think that's when I learned I had to really learn. I'm still learning how to balance things up because around that time I prioritized outlaws a lot, like mm-hmm. over like for sure uh, friendships back home. Um, mm-hmm. If the only reason that I kept in touch with you guys on campus, even off it was because you guys were involved in outlaws. Yeah. So it was like killing two birds in one stone, but yeah, like even to a point where schoolwork was kind of floating off, it was like, that was everything. And that was like, I'm putting everything into this because I wanted to work. I wanted to elevate to levels that none of these other dance teams have even thought of getting to. And then, and yeah, like it was the thing of like getting back. It is like, Oh shoot. Like I, whatever this was that I was doing, I have no control over it. Um, I can't hold it anymore. I have no access to it. Even if I tried, it's like too far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was one of those things where I kind of, at least for me personally, cause I took dance in the sense like, yeah, I had fun with it. But part of it was I took it very seriously. But yeah. Like I yeah. clowned a lot and whatnot, but I'm like, and like, you remember, I know that's something you said, I was like, come on, like put your game face on. Like, what are you guys doing? This and that. That was yeah. like the, like the, I want to, I want this to be something part of me. Like, yeah, I want to mind having fun, going now, movies, whatever it is. But the part of, like, me yelling <laughs> for no, really no good reason was because I was like, right. this needs to be something because this is all I have right now at this point. And, yeah, coming back home, it was one of those things where it's, like, deflated because I'm like, wow, what was all that for? Like, what? Like, yeah, yeah. I see it now. Like, it felt almost like a... <clears throat> And it, oh, and it sucked even more because around the same time I had to accept that like I have nothing to do with it anymore it was around the same mm-hmm. time that my ex girlfriend broke up with me. So it was imagine mm-hmm. that right. So whatever uh, yeah. like like if I were to list it right, and if, now they're looking at now this wasn't necessarily healthy. Maybe had it right. had it balanced it would have worked out, but it was like outlaws. Um, I guess you guys would fall into my relationships with my friends there. Um, hmm. family, my girlfriend, but even then, at that my girlfriend at that time, those would like fluctuate, and then like school. So it was like way out of whack. So yeah. finally, like when two of those, I guess, top two things were like gone, it's like, what do I do now? Like, what? What's the focus? Like, what? Right. Like, what? What do I have? Like it's, I know this is very like it takes it very deep. Like, what do I have to live for? But it felt like that. Like, obviously, yeah. I, mean, I have friends at home. Like, I'm my family. Like, school, I can still keep going. But it felt for a second like, what do I have to live for? Like, whatever I had, it's gone. Like this, it's done. Like, and the confidence that came with that was gone. The desire to do much was gone. Uh, whatever balance I had, that went out the window. Like it was just like. Right. Just like I mean, two breakups at the same time. Like it was just like, and but it's so crazy because looking back at it now, and even that time going back home, I was like, was it that serious? Like, was it? Why did I take such a dive? But then right. I think back, like it was because I put so much into those things. Um, even if towards the end, like I, I felt like stressed about it, I wasn't feeling too good about it. I still put as much as I could in it. Um, so then losing that, like a huge chunk of whatever you prioritize, it feels weird. And I remember I'd tell my friends like, yo, it's like, cause I remember I texted you guys, I forgot what, when it was, when I told you guys. So, uh, I think either Amanda or one of you guys texted, Hey everybody, how's it going? And I think yeah. I texted, so uh, my girlfriend broke up with me <laughs> or something like that. At that point, yeah. I felt like garbage. I was like, I have nothing to do. But it's it's weird because, and I guess I'm saying this because to anyone who's listening, I think it happens a lot more than we think. Because, right. like, I don't know. Because I, if at that moment I felt like what, like, like a failure, if I'm being frank, 
Because it was just, again, like I said, I put everything into these things and it didn't work out. <clears throat> and I guess I had to learn to get over that to a point where I even treated the whole I lost thing like a breakup where I stopped following the Instagram. I didn't oh, you even did? Look at, yeah, I didn't even look at the videos anymore. I was like, I can't because then I'm going to be like, and that just shows you how much I was in it, how much a part of my life it was. But yeah, man, because I mean, yeah, there's good memories. Like, yeah, you know, as awkward as it was when you and me stuck in that house, it's right. too sad. It's funny to me now. I'm like, yo, we were oh, really no, in there. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were really the, in there, like, we, no confident. business. And then we were like, <laughs> bro, it's not our scene. We are not, did not belong here. I think what for me was like, <laughs> I think like I suppressed it just because of how awkward that was. But now that I'm thinking about it, like, I can't believe that happened. Like, that, like, Normally, I tell myself, like, don't be in awkward situations because I freak out. But mm-hmm. I put myself in a lot of awkward situations <laughs> because of outlaws. It's just, it's just, like, following you, following exactly. Jay, following Amanda, all of those people yes. that were like, yeah, it'll be fun. Just come. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it'll be fun. Um, what I was going to say was, uh, I think what ended up happening is, like, I think for me, I had the realization of, I'm not going to be a dancer. Like, mm-hmm. like, I think, I don't know if it was during you guys were there or it was after you and Jay left and it was just like me and Amanda. And like, I had to like figure things out really quickly because like once you guys left, like it, it was just like me and Amanda and it was just, it didn't, it didn't ever feel like the whole group again. Like we were just like off. Like I definitely didn't make, any effort because I was just I think I might have been depressed or just had like major anxiety about where I was going academically and I think I was in I was like starting my relationship with my Lynn so then that was like also kind of tough because she was going to grad school and I had like the worst grades possible to still be in as an undergrad and like mm-hmm. trying to do outlaws and races and then it was like I didn't even know what I was going to do afterwards so then it was like this whole like cycle of like do I worry about my life now and just be happy and just try to like do races and outlaws or do I worry about how to plan my life after college because that was probably going to be more important and then it was like I was so caught up on my like grades and like being socially accepted because it was really nice being able to go to parties and like have fun and people know you and then it was just like nice like all of it was nice and then when it all came down you're just like fuck, like what the fuck do I do now so I think for me like like when you were saying it kind of felt like a failure for me, it was more or less like I was just like lost, like lost while still mm-hmm. being in it. it. It just didn't feel right anymore. I was just like lost to the point where it was just like, I don't even know why I'm doing anything anymore. And it was just crazy because I remember after you left and I had realized that I'm not going to be dancers. So then what's the point in committing all those hours and like yeah. stressing out about it? Um to try and focus in school right and then I completely like abandoned Amanda so eventually like I think second semester of whenever that was probably junior senior I don't know when I tried to go back into outlaws and I had auditioned and that audition was like the weirdest thing for me because I went in there and everyone still knew me everyone was still like hyped that I was back but Amanda and I forgot her name. I forgot her name. But whatever. <laughs> I mean, they, they were in charge, right? They were in charge. So they were like, they, they were being really up. hard. They were like, yeah, they made me audition. Oh. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a audition, like a, like how we, how when I first did it. It was yeah. more or less like a, just join, pick up choreography and join yeah. in whenever you can. Yeah. And I did it, but I did mess up like immediately. Like, I messed up a couple of times, but. I thought I went completely bad. I thought I wasn't going to get in or I wasn't accepted because Amanda and I keep forgetting her name, but whoever was in charge, they were like, Maya, yeah, they were stone cold. Like, they were just like, like nothing, like no emotion, no reaction, no nothing. And so like, after we finished whatever piece, whatever eight counts they were doing and 
it was like a break. I try to sit down and like talk to Amanda and be like, oh, like, like old time. And she like wasn't having it and neither was Maya. So then I was like freaking out because I was like, bro, this isn't the same as like how it used to be. Like, like I'm not, I'm like, I thought I was going to come in here and be like kind of happy, like, you know, like old times. And it just wasn't. And I freaked out and like, I just left. And Maya like came after me and she was like, where are you going? Like, we need you. We need you. And I was like, I just, I can't, like, I, I just, I can't. Dude, I like went home and I like cried because I was just so stressed. I was yeah. so lost because I was like, okay, I think what I had decided was I'm going to go try out. If it feels good, then it's meant to be for me to just like stick with it and just have that college experience, right? The first half when I got there, I was, I was hyped. I was like, Jay remembers me. Other, other Jay. Jay remembers me. Um, other people re- remember me dancing feels good amanda's there maybe this is like the start of like me coming back and like being okay and then like that like it could be like a minute two minute session of like me trying to like talk to amanda and maya and they're just like not reciprocating anything and i'm just like this ain't it like this ain't it and then i fucking i went home cried i was like freaking out i was like bro what am i even doing here anymore it was crazy. It's crazy yeah. how like how how you felt like completely like a failure for me. I was just like lost. I was like, bro, I should have just like left with Barry. Like I should just like <laughs> yeah. left with Barry. Shut I was like, own I don't cup, even know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I was like so <laughs> lost. And the thing too was like mm. I was I hadn't like felt confident like ever in my life up until like I had you guys. And then when like you guys left. I was still like, okay, maybe this could be okay. And it wasn't. I was like, fuck, like, I was just, I was just <laughs> out on sea, like, just fucking drifting, nowhere to go. And shit just never worked out. And I think that's why, like, I did Raices because it was easier for me. Like, they were always, like, happy and, like, like they care that I was there, but they didn't, like, care. So then whenever <laughs> I would, like, see outlaws and Amanda would, like, see me, she would, like, be... So, be yeah. tight and i'm just like what do you want me to do like i don't feel comfortable like going in there and like being heavy with like commitment and like trying to figure out if like our friendship is still okay and mm-hmm. like it was just wasn't the same with like you or jay not being there because like you guys used to be my buffers to be like it's not that serious or let's get serious and like it'll all just be fun in general like even when we're fucking around or trying to be serious is still fun, you know? And so, like, that's why I stick with Raices and not Outlaws. Because at least there, I was, like, kind of okay and not completely lost. But even then, too, I was like, bro, I'm committing too many hours for this team. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to be a dancer in life. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, crazy. Yeah, it's, so. it's crazy you're, that you bring that up. Because, like, yeah. I mean, th- again, I'm pretty sure that's the first time I hear about that. At least that yeah. story. Yeah, because I didn't. Damn, yeah, I don't think crazy. you ever told me that because that in that case that brings to mind like part of why I also felt so like disappointed. Like, damn, like there was a plan in place, and that's why I also yeah. felt bad for Amanda too because the 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 idea was, and there was some controversy in that because I remember I don't know if you remember me, you, Jay, and Amanda had a conversation where the idea mm-hmm. was it would be like a trifecta. It would be you, me, and Amanda leading the way. Because mm-hmm. it, and then we agreed that there'd be some type of balance, um, but you know, like, and it, it's, I could see the reasoning why. Like, I know if um, I thought they're gonna watch this, but I remember Maya wasn't totally happy about that because, and right. I understand because she was one of the better dancers for sure, and she was a veteran if you want to label it like yeah. that. Um, so there was that whole thing. So I remember, <laughs> I think yeah, I used to be like yeah, you know, it's gonna cause problems. You know, maybe I just. I just want to be part of this, but you know, I know you still want to be part of the group, but Mm -hmm. like you said, that whole situation, like that's, if any, that's what I always would, that's for sure something I would never want to happen to anybody because I know what that feels like, that feeling of like being in a space where you thought you'd be comfortable and it's Mm -hmm. like, oh no, 
that ain't it. <laughs> like, that's not that, it. This ain't and, it at yeah. all. I was like, I freaked out, dude. I was like, fuck. And, like, the reason I ran so quickly, like, out of there was because I was, like, freaking out. I was like, bro, I'm not going to cry in this room full of people. I'm going to go home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Dude, that was crazy. Yeah, it, it's oh, crazy. I remember that day. I can again. I I probably have to apologize for that because I yeah. know for sure it's because I know. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let's say um, because you know, like I said, I pretty much made you right. Like I said earlier, before I uh, made you okay. who you are. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, but do you think things would have panned out differently in in your journey if if I had gone back? And it's not even that, not to say that, oh, I had such an impact in your life, but at least for me personally, um, like yeah, I had yeah. a vision of what was to come because mm-hmm. I was like, you know, yeah, Jay's leaving and he's leaving soon because of school and whatnot, but Hector's still there, Amanda's still there, like the group is still there, like, it'll be cool, we could still work mm-hmm. it out, it's three of us, and we all, we know we're going to hit up Jay, da 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 um, But I mean, that was in my mindset, but in your head, if you think about it now, do you think things would have panned out differently? Like, not necessarily saying that. You know what? I do want to be a dancer, but at least right. in a sense where Outlaws would have still been an outlet or or you would have felt at least still had some level of confidence or comfortability on, on campus. I think so. And, the, like, the main reason I say it is because of, like, the social out- aspect outside of practice and outside of shows. Like, once you or Jay weren't there, it was like me and Amanda trying to like build this like relationship that was kind of there, but never really formed. Like, it, like we hung out when we were all there, but I feel like it was always in circumstances where it was always some- with like with someone else too. Mm-hmm. It was like me, you and Amanda or me, Jay and Amanda. It was like never just me and her. And if it ever was, it's because we were like on our way from main campus to south or like main to somewhere else so it was like never really like big things of like i'm hitting up amanda to go see her alone so if you were there like i would it would probably be the same like i would have hung out with you i wouldn't have felt like as alone like that year that semester like i would have definitely felt i think at a better like my like a state of mind being able to Mm. be at syracuse because i would have had you and Amanda and like it would have been like better for me because I feel like when we were all there I would either hang out with you a lot or I would either hang out with Jay a lot so it was like like you guys were my only friends that I consistently saw when you guys were all when we were all there so it's like if you had came back I definitely feel like that semester would have gone differently mm. yeah and I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, bro. You made me cry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I made it's okay. You cry. It was rough. It was rough. Oh, it was yeah. rough. But I mean, it, it was all for the. I think it was all for the best. Like, it made me think of, about a lot of things, and like, like I was so afraid of like being alone when I had mm. first gotten to Syracuse because in high school, like, I finally got that taste of like long term friendships where it's like I made friends my freshman year and I kept them up until senior year so it was like this feels nice like I like having people that I grow up with for a certain time and like they know me and like I know them and shit happens throughout the years so then when I went to Syracuse I was like fuck I have to start all over but you never know like you start off with people like anything happened right freshman year was a fucking dud sophomore year got a little bit better but then like the end of sophomore year I met you guys and I was like I like this could be something right you know so like <laughs> when once like our group formed I got that feeling again of like like wow we're gonna be like we're gonna be a solid group for a while and like I can count on these people and like I didn't care that it was only four books like I was so yeah. happy with that I was like like I don't need more than that like no one else really gives a shit about me other than the people here so that's all I really care about yeah so so yeah. Dang, dude. Uh, so sorry, bro. So sorry, dude. Okay. No, it. I, good. I guess like, yeah. In a similar sense, I felt that just you know back home, but it yeah. almost. I don't. Know, I don't want to compare, but for me, it almost feels worse because 
I'm home, right? Like, oh, I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be comfortable. Like, I'm mm-hmm. a family. Like, this is my space. This is my house. This is my home, my city, my town, my hometown. But I felt like I was a fish out of water. It felt so mm-hmm. like I went from waking up early, going to class, going to rehearsal, hanging out, staying up late, eating, going out for late night uh, uh, drives, whatever it was, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, waking up, going for a run, being the dog. Figuring out what I'm gonna do, clean the house, <laughs> and then like just kind of, and even then like I, I started talking more to my, and I mentioned this like the episode way way back, but I, mm-hmm. it was like crap. Now I have to really rekindle my friendships that I had here because yeah. I prioritized so much out there. Like my life was in Syracuse, my life was there. Period, mm-hmm. and I can see that now because. A lot of my close friends now, like the Cash Potato Squad or more friends that I started talking to again, um, I barely spoke to them, really, when I was out there. Yeah, the texting in there. Yeah. Or if it was the breakup, like the first time, that's when I hit them up too. So in times of sadness. Yeah. So, yeah, in, in, in hindsight, I really didn't keep up with that relationship or at least those relationships. Uh, so coming back, so now it's like, great. I lost, not necessarily lost my relationship with you guys, but now it's going to be mm-hmm. tougher. Because you're always doing your own thing. The time zone, everybody's busy. I'm trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do, feeling lost and, like, I failed. To now also rekindling these friendships. Like, I want to hang out with people. I want to have that social aspect again. Uh, yeah. How do I do it to people who I kind of deaded for months on end, right? And, you know, yeah. luckily I didn't ghost people completely. But it was borderline that. And it was, it's so weird, man, because, like, <laughs> it's it's like – Man, like, like it was at a point. Well, t- well, I didn't run home because I I was already home, but I was at a point right. where I would just sit in like the garage before it's even a studio, just cry and be like, oh. like what is going on, dude? Like what, like what, what is this? And hey. yeah, it was it was a weird time. I mean, it's still a weird time because you know, luckily, because for a while, well, not recently, but there was a while where I was so nostalgic. And and has such a desire, had such a desire for what had happened in the past, whether it was right. outlaws, our friendships, or the moments in our life, and the moments we had, mm-hmm. um, where it was like I was living in the past essentially. I was so much like, man, I wish I could do this, this, and that. I would have done this just, like with him or with her, and like would have been cool, blah blah. Where, but now I'm at a point, you know, like I can say, bless that I'm blessed to be living in the present more. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. do I think about Syracuse and the memories I had? Yeah, for sure. Do I think about like, do I try to keep in touch with you guys? For sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's not at a point where I'm like, it's totally consuming <laughs> my daily activities where I'm like right. hanging out with friends. I'm like, yo, Hector, that was funny, bro. And he was like, what? <laughs> what did you call me? Uh, I don't know what he's talking about, bro. So luckily, it's never gone to that point. But, yeah, but it's it's weird, but like, cause you know, we kind of talked before this, right? Talk about life events mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, right. But like, you know, hearing, you know, catching up for a little bit, it made me realize, like, damn, dude, like, I'm grateful that we at least stay in touch as much as we do, because yeah. it it's like, like next year I'm gonna be 25, and that like, I'm like, what the heck? Like, that's crazy. Like, I walked onto campus with a little taste of like what it was like to be popular in high school to now hey. being like a freaking zero again, <laughs> like this <laughs> freshman, like, here we go. All to right. then reaching that, that, that peak of like, wow, like I'm kind of popular, like at least confident in that sense, not necessarily popular, mm-hmm. but more confident if anything to then <laughs> nose diving back to like, I'm a zero again, freshman. Yeah. Right. But I mean, I had a point to this. I don't know. But long story short, um, I'm just glad. I'm just glad that we. we I'm so glad we did. Uh, yeah, no, but it's it's cool, man. It's it's. I'm glad to still keep in touch with you, cause especially when the holidays. Cause for me, amazing segue. Uh, for me, yeah, I was gonna say I was, like, was good, right? I was about to hit you up with like, hey, wasn't weren't we supposed to hit topics? Right yeah, now? See, see what I did this. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> but no, but. 
because for me personally, I love the holidays, Christmas, New Year's. Right. Like, winter is like my freaking time. That's when I'm like the world, like right now the world's in pandemic, right? It's in, it's in a very uh -huh. tragic state. But for me, I'm like, it's cool. There's a new day tomorrow. Today's a new day, whatever it is. Right. I'm hyped. Right. Oh, what? Jingle bells on the radio. Turn it up. Like I'm that type of, I love Christmas. <laughs> the tree, the lights, oh, all that stuff. Why? Um, like, what about, what about, wait, is it just like Christmas in general? Or you're saying like December, like that month is just like your, it's your time. Just, just the month. Cause for me okay. personally, I love fall and winter because mm -hmm. I prefer the cold over the heat over the summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, over the summer, cause you can do so much more. Um, well, there's a lot to do, especially late out at night. It's like 70 degrees, especially back in LA or in California. It's not that cold, right. not that hot. Uh, but when it gets hot, it gets hot. So I'm like, I'm not yeah. a fan of that. But in the winter or the fall, like if it's chilly, you put two sweaters, put one sweater. Like you can choose to do what mm -hmm. you want. With the heat, you can't get naked and walk in the streets. It's, <laughs> okay. like, it's like you can't do much. It's like you can't do anything. Right. But it's just the overall, like, the feeling. Like when I see stores decorate their storefronts, uh, when Walmart or certain uh, – franchises start playing christmas soundtracks over this loudspeaker like i feel right. like like a kid like i like that feeling like wow like because okay. for me me in, you know obviously kid you're like oh so many gifts but even growing yeah. up just the idea of having a moment whether it was friends or, or with family like it's i don't just being able to share that like this is cool like we're together because it for, yeah. i don't know for me personally it's rare that I can get together with the family in, in its entirety and not mm -hmm. even saying that there's a lot of us. It's just us in its entirety to do something. Right. Um, I don't know. I just like that. And, you know, it's just cool. Cause I don't know. It's a lot of cool Christmas movies too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a cool way to wrap it up, I guess. You know, <laughs> all this inspirational stuff. And then I don't know. Cool yeah, it's Christmas just a cool Christmas. Christmas. I, it's I, cool. <laughs> but what about you? I mean, what are you, what is your stance on like holidays or New Year's? Are you kind of like, eh, whatever about it? You know, just go with the flow. What, or you just outright hate it? No, I, I don't. I don't hate it. I think for me, it uh, it just causes like a lot of like unwanted stress, especially now that I'm older. Mm. Like when I was younger, I was kind of like, I'm just happy that things are happening like in December. Yeah. Um, like. Uh, I think it was because, like, I think that would be the time that I was moving, like, somewhere random. And it's kind of conflicting because, uh, I mean, for my family, December has, like, four holidays or four big events. So mm -hmm. the 20th, which was, like, two days ago, uh, my sister's birthday. Oh. And then, like, five days later is Christmas. And then five days after that, the 30th, is my birthday. And then right. <laughs> the next day is New Year's Eve. And then the Damn. next day after that is New Year's. So it's, like things would always happen in December. Mm -hmm. It's like two weeks go by and then it's like, all right, like we got to start planning for shit here and yeah. there. And then like, if I ever was back in LA during December, I would go see family. And like, it just so happens that all of their birthdays were like in December, but like in the early week. So it's like mm -hmm. December 3rd is a cousin's birthday, December 13th, a friend's birthday. And then December 17th, another cousin's birthday. And then it's like my sister's Christmas my birthday so it's just like for like december was always just like popping if i were seeing family so it was like yeah. those were always cool times just to like be around family but now that i'm older it's just like there's so many people that i would like to give gifts to and i'm so broke mm. that i can barely give myself like <laughs> anything throughout like the week throughout the month throughout the year so it's like it's tough it's, it's tough like especially like i was in college you know, we were both working. I was like finally getting money, and I was like, "Oh, like I could buy my brother something for his birthday." Like, like December, I would like save up and I would like cash out money like crazy. Like I didn't have a lot, but it would be like two hundred dollars in my bank account. That's all gone. Like Ooh, December, yeah. it's just done. Like <laughs> December fifth, money's done with because mm -hmm. I like bought things and I'm wrapping things. So, like, it just caused unwanted stress, but. Now that I'm like a little bit older and my siblings are a little bit older, I kind of just like ask them like, hey, what do you want? And they'll most likely tell me things and it'll be like one thing. And then the rest of the time is just like, we just want to hang out. So it's like, okay, I can yeah. do that. 
And then, yeah. So I think the only thing that I do like about the holidays is just like the time off. Like my mind, I think by this time, my mind knows like, bro, you just got to relax. Like mm-hmm. if you're trying to keep working at the, the same rate that I have been, I'm just like breaking down. Yeah, it's bro. like not healthy. Yeah. Cause today, like I actually took a nap like throughout the day. Like I, I'm not a, a day napper kind of person that's like oh i gotta get my like 12 o'clock nap in like i don't yeah. do i just fucking like the whole day until like eight nine o'clock hits i'm like i'm tired sleep, i'm gonna go yeah. sleep like like that's that's always been me i'm not i'm not a big nap person i think it might be like fomo like i just have huge fucking fomo i just want to be with everyone mm. but but yeah so did i even answer the question like i don't even no, know no no you, you de- <laughs> no you definitely okay. did oh okay no, right. for sure. You know, okay. and it's funny, yeah, because as you get older, right? Because as a kid, you're like, I ain't gonna buy nobody nothing. Or if you yeah. if you do, you make something right for your parents if you yeah. do want to give them something. But right. now, yeah, getting older, it's like, especially if you now that I'm working more consistently, you're like, I guess I gotta buy people stuff, right? Yeah. But now I realize, but my I guess my kind of cheat is mm-hmm. my focus is just the kids. Oh, okay. Like, you know what? If I can buy anything, it's it'll be the kids, like my little brother, my yeah. little sisters, um, my little cousins, if I can. And mm. then <laughs> what I do is, if for the adults, I just get them like I'm pretty sure you've seen those tin, those tins full of popcorn. Oh, that's what yeah. You- <laughs> I just get them that because I'm like, what, what do you need? Just look, just <laughs> eat this. You'll be fine. Like this will last yeah, you a month. Yeah. yeah. Because it's yeah. like it's like at least out of you, you know, like. He's yeah, a little, he's a little, that's yeah. True, that's true. But yeah, no, that's my little cheat. I'm like, just the kids. Just do it for yeah. the kids. They'll be fine. Whatever. And that, that thing too, because when people like, I'm like, if you want to give me something, just ask me. Mm-hmm. Ask me what I want. And I'll tell, I'm not going to be like, give me a PS5 and a, I want this right. now. Like, I mean, if you offer it, I'm going to take it. That's for sure. But I'll be right. like, dude, because like, just give me some socks. I like socks. I like cool socks. I like a cool t shirt. A hoodie, if you really want to go all out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but yeah, if anything, just I just like being. You know, I think part of it has to do because I, I'll talk with my mom. I'll be like, a lot of the stuff I learned growing up. Like mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't know about you, but for me, I think especially when you have like a, a grandparent or older people in the family. Um, like growing up, like whether it's puberty or the talk, right, or this, this, and that. It's I like if I'm honest with you, I've never had like the talk. I've never had that right. conversation. But the idea of like you're gonna see changes in your body, da da da. The way I learned was through film, was through movies. Like I guess I grew up through movies in the sense of like coming of like, age, like like uh, love, what hard. rated like what what rated movies? Like. <laughs> you're <a> clown. Like, <laughs> no, I mean like it, when when like if, for example like you know like. Like in action movies, right? The the action. Oh. Movie, he's like, there's a love making scene when it's really just them, and it pe- like cuts out. I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess that's what that is. Okay. And that I mean that that for me was kind of, I didn't know specifics, right? Obviously right. through health class and whatnot, you're like, oh, oh that's you what have that health is. Class? I didn't uh, have health class. <laughs> no, no. Like in, like in middle school and in high school, they were like really like, this is what this is. Da, 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 da. Uh. Um. No help. Yeah, I mean, so, man, you should have watched more movies, dude, like I did. You would have learned more. <laughs> okay. You watched a ton of movies. That's, that's what that was. <laughs> uh, a bunch of movies. That's what. A bunch of movies. A bunch <laughs> but, of movies. But, but it also, that's how I really learned a lot. Like, whether it was like relationships, love, right. and maybe that wasn't necessarily a good thing because, you know, you right. go in certain situations with a, a fantasy like mindset expectation. And when it doesn't mm-hmm. work out there, we're like, what the heck? But that's what that movie told me it was going to work out as a kid, right? Mm-hmm. And, but, you know, that's when experience helps. You know, you know, it's not totally like that. It can be like that in mo- moments, but it's not always going to be like that. Right. But, but I guess that's why for me, when I watch Christmas movies, especially when it's like, oh, family's getting together, this, this, and that. I always liked it as a kid. So when it happened, mm-hmm. I was like, this is awesome. This is dope. And yeah. even like when I see movies, right, like or even shows like New Girl, right, where – some go on there or sometimes they'll stick together that main core of characters. I'm like, right. man, I can't wait to have that moment where um, maybe I'm not able to visit my family that year, but I have this family here, like my friends, like we're doing something together. We decided to stay together. We'll go visit, but you know, maybe we're going to stick. So that 
for yeah. me, like just this idea of like good vibes, bro. During the yeah. week, like 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 you said, there's always something happening. Maybe mm-hmm. there's a, a light walk through there that they did. There's like a snow machine blowing out snow here and there, or you know whatever it is. Like I always feel like in December, or at least this month of holidays, there's always something going on. Right. Um, I guess that's why I have such an affinity for it. Like I'm always hyped in holidays. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a little bit of a nicer person. Uh, but yeah. Pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, how familiar are you with like Christmas movies or Christmas songs? Not that well. I thought it was, but I guess not. I'm not yeah. that well. Yeah. <laughs> I think... <laughs> Uh, I think um, I feel like I have like a good amount, like maybe average. I'm probably average. Average. A little. I would say boring. Yeah, I would be like a little bit below average to average. That's where I'm at. I would like to. to (laughs) I think I know all the like the top songs, but I'm not like yeah. yeah, But I'm not like uh yeah. I don't know like any any heavy like holiday songs or like holiday (laughs) movies like. I'll holiday bangers <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not into like heavy heavy bangers for christmas you know yeah, or yeah. new year's <laughs> yeah but oh it's just, like what's the like i mean i watch elf for christmas i always Ooh, watch that i love that movie so much what, what's another good christmas movie i've seen bad santa like a bunch of oh, times yeah. i've seen what else have i seen I don't know. Just start naming shit off, and I'll let you know. Just start. Oh, uh, nightmare. <laughs> nightmare before Christmas. No, nah, I've never seen it. Eh, all right, uh, Jingle All the Way. No. Home Alone. Yes. Okay. Which is funny because is that really? It's a Thanksgiving. Movie? It's, it's, it's like Thanksgiving, but, right? So. But they they a lot of people have kind of pushed it into kind of like a Christmas movie. Especially right. the second one. The second one for sure feels much more like a Christmas movie. Yeah, right. Christmas movie. Oh, no, 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 wait. I think Home Alone, is it Thanksgiving or is it Christmas? Because the one that is Thanksgiving but feels like Christmas is this movie called Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, something like that. It's I have old... seen that one. Oh, you seen that one? Yeah, I've okay, seen that one. So that one is Thanksgiving, but it feels okay. like Christmas. That mm-hmm. movie makes me cry, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, man. But um, I, I guess my other question: What would you say? What Christmas song is it that? Because you know, some people like they play it all the time. I get tired of it. But is there a Christmas song they listen to? You're like, you know, I like this. I like you. Don't, it doesn't bother you. It's just like you know, I, I can, I can hear it, and it won't be like, uh, it'll be all right. The vibe. Like a so. Christmas song. Uh, yeah. I think the Mariah Carey. Oh. The <laughs> that song. You want to talk about bangers, boy? Bangers, <laughs> that's, that's a hit. Bangs. Like, whoo, gets me going. Like, yeah. I think it was, it was too, because like in high school, um, in high school, my high school would do like Christmas um, showcases uh, with cheer oh, and drill okay. teams. And that was their main song. Like that, was, over, and over, every over. year I would, and every year I would like hear them practice. Like they'd be practicing for the same hours that I was for like <laughs> track or basketball. And it's loud. You would just hear like the beginning and they would cut off and be like, do it again. It's not right. <laughs> so it's like I <laughs> carry for like five seconds in like one day. And you're like, damn, like, like, well, I remember when I was there, I was like, I fucking hate this song. And then like my junior year after listening to it for like three years, I was like, this is a banger. Like, this is a banger. banger for sure. <laughs> this is for sure going to go down with me like forever. So. Like that song, I think is a. I have no issue listening to it now yeah. for sure. Yeah. Now, I think that song. I mean, I forgot what year was released, but for that song forever past our lifetimes will stick. Like right. the like the classics, right? So there's that one, uh, all the one for you is Christmas, Jingle Bell mm-hmm. Rock, um, Baby It's Cold Outside, mm-hmm. which technically isn't. A Christmas song. A Christmas but I guess song. It's more it's, of a. It's, it's a, a winter holidays. Yes, I know. It's, it's yeah, a I know. Dark ass song. <laughs> it's They're like very dark. Like you'll die if you leave the house right now because it's so right. cold. Right. But some people throw it in into the winter playlist. Um, I like the uh, the which one is it the 
the the very next day you gave it away oh damn i'll give it to someone that so i went to cvs and they were bumping that and i was like <laughs> oh it's a party in cvs but i get my, <laughs> I get my medicine yeah I think I like that one. I I think it's because it's got like a 70s, 80s vibe. I think, <laughs> I don't know why I like it. Like, I, I just like that type of style. And I remember my mom singing it once. And I was like, bro, what? Are what you freestyling right now? <laughs> and she's like, you don't know about this? I was like, no, I'm like 10. What do I know about what? anything? <laughs> she like played it. And I was like, oh, this is good. Like, this, this is a good yeah. Song. So yeah, I really like that one too. Yeah, that one, um, I don't know, I always loved, and I have a memory from elementary school, a uh, rocking around the Christmas tree. Because I remember, it's like rocking around the Christmas tree. Because oh, okay. in our yeah. elementary, in our, I forgot what class it was, but one person was dressed up as a tree. And we would all like walk like this around the tree while the song played. Uh-huh. The whole yeah. song. Like, not like choreo, <laughs> just. It's just that. <laughs> yeah, just that. The whole time. <laughs> And we performed it in front of the whole school. Yeah, bro. That was, oh, that was tough. And then, like, there's tough. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I was, like, yeah. I think Blitzen. And we had, mm-hmm. like, the rain, the little hats. And, like, the one of them was Rudolph. I yeah. wish I had that part, but I never got it. Um, you're, not, you're not a Rudolph, bro. You I'm not a Rudolph type. Fact. Not a Rudolph type. But, but yeah, you're I don't good. know. I, it's, it's just weird. I guess I just have, like, an affinity for the holidays. I just feel like spirits are high. I don't know. I know yeah. there's a lot going on, but for me, I feel like I automatically go like, Whoop. like I feel like cool. Um, mm. But yeah, man, that's pretty much what I have for the holiday talk. Imagine if it was just that, this would have been a much shorter. Yeah. Podcast. It would have just been. Like, it would have been like twenty the, minutes. You you know what you should do? You should like cut it from the point where you made that segue. And just like start it there and see how much it is like how much time oh, we spent yes. about <laughs> just to see just to see like what like wow this would have been like, yeah, like five minutes five minutes. five minute podcast special yeah. edition <laughs> so yeah cool. it's a good thing we caught up then yeah uh yeah no it's yeah. crazy because I still haven't had Amanda on here yet you've had Jay well I mean you haven't had like Jay yeah on here. officially uh, but I know Joshua. This, fool's, this fool's always busy man. If he's yeah. not always busy and he tells you he's not always busy, I'm going to kill him because he tells me no. he's busy. He, I think he is. I mean, he only ever hits me up if, like, his brother has an idea and is like, yo, we need your help with a website. Or, like, he has an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like if I ever tell him, like, oh, I'm going to be back in California, uh, which is, like, rare because he'll sometimes, like, hit me up at the airport. He was like, what are you doing right now? I was like, I'm at the airport about to go back to California. He's like, oh, okay, then I'll just see you when you get here. I was like, all right. But it's only been like once, I think, I've seen him when I've been back. So I haven't even seen him like this year. So, so yeah, he, he only hits me up when he needs me for something. Never to catch up for a friend. But it's I fine. Wanna be, I want to be needed by somebody. I'm not hurt or anything. <laughs> No, it's hopefully soon. Hopefully, sometime soon we can all get together with Amanda as well. Yeah, just to see if the spark is still there. Because if it's not, then we can just go away. You know? <laughs> we we can just cut that. Just cut, just cut it. You know, yeah. I don't have to worry about hitting you guys up anymore. That's yeah, less, I think it is because every time I talk to jo- to Josh J. Joshua Evans, it's always the same. They just revert just back to government like government name. Government Joshua Evans, bro. He, you gotta humble his ass because he's always. Like, I'm, I'm fucking. Cool. He's still in outlaws. No, uh, no, he like the last conversation I had with him was pretty deep. Was like, yeah, he was ha- he, he was like the same conversation we're having where he's like, he was really in that character of like I'm Jay, like yeah, people know me. And when he came over here, he was still having, like, that vibe. And it's like, people don't know you, bro. You SoundCloud right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> SoundCloud. <laughs> You're not Spotify top 20. Yeah. You, you, you SoundCloud. You started again. You know, so, like, he was telling me that he, he definitely uh, was going through it. 
where he was like, I got to got to humble myself and be like, I'm just a regular person just trying to like make my own dreams happen or like trying to yeah. make my own moves over here without having that big head of like, people are going to know my name and it's going to be cool. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like, people know me. Hopefully they're only saying good things and not bad shit. So. Yeah. No, yeah. Hopefully again, like, hopefully we can all, we all get a chance to see each other. Cause yeah. I know we're all living our own busy lives. I know you're uh if I'm correct, you told me earlier you were a, uh, a park ranger. You save people who get stuck on on uh, big rocks <laughs> no. in the National Forest. No. <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, I was like, where are you like, going? What? Yeah, no. I yeah. rock climb as a form of exercise and activity. Yes. Yeah. I'm like really, really obsessed with rock climbing. I mean, do you, I'm pre- I'm sure you've heard of that guy, um, Alex Honnold. Yeah, yeah, that guy's crazy. That yeah, he's just pretty cool. He's like one of the most in, like not okay. I don't know person, obviously, but in terms of nah, his you ability, know him personally, don't lie. Yeah, I'm gonna add him on the podcast with him. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, he is. I guess crazy in the sense where it's like, because I know in interviews he said he's not like an adrenaline junkie. It's just his mm-hmm. passion. And I'm yeah. like, dude, you're. If, I wish I could be that crazy about like. Well, I am about something, but I can't wait to fully just start completely twenty four seven. That's my life. Yeah. Uh, applied there, but have you seen the documentary he did? Yeah, Free Solo. I've seen it like a fuck ton of times. I haven't seen. I saw the documentary of the making of, and it's like twenty uh-huh. minutes long. That itself was freaking dope because. Bro, you should see it. Yeah, you I gotta see really it. Really good. That yeah, you gotta also listen to or watch um Tommy Codwell. It's this other crazy climber mm-hmm. who is like really strong, has like a crazy backstory too, like growing up as a like he randomly came onto the scene at like a really young age as a strong climber and like eventually went to like some Estan country like Kazakhstan, Urkistan, Uzbek whatever it's called, right? To climb over there and like at age like thirteen, fifteen him and the people that he was with which is like four other people were like kidnapped by like rebel army and taken into the mountains like starving and like dehydrated as fuck like at a young age and like there's a point where i guess the rebellion that was like that kidnapped them had like dispersed because they were just like yeah. beat in the war and it was only two people left or like yeah two people left and so in his group, they're going up like a, a sketchy mountain path that like, I guess the, the, the guys that took them like weren't accustomed to. And Tommy like made this move to like push him off the mountain so that they could escape. And it just like changed his life as a climber and as a person. And then like later in his years as a climber, he ended up like cutting his like uh, index finger and like that changed his climbing career in general because i mean like when you're climbing you essentially want to use all hands and like there's these specific moves where it's like you're holding on to small pebbles of rock and it's called like a full crimp or like um like a half crimp and stuff and so for him to only have like have this much of grip strength it's completely different so it's like that's crazy and then he climbs the same um he climbed the same uh like rock or yeah mountain whatever that yeah, alex Connell right. did it's um in yosemite el it's Cap- uh, el capitan no yeah <laughs> el capitan no el, el capitan <laughs> el capitan no que si was. that's Hello. you know it's funny you say the vibe but yeah because because yeah. like i heard people say el capitan right and i say it because of the interviews i've heard it's right. alex and whatnot but right. I've never heard you say El Capitan. <laughs> it, it sounds <laughs> yeah, like I like know. a like a little like a little mountain. El Capitan, yeah. eh, buddy, uh, El Capitan, like... uh, yeah, you know, you just take a look. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, or El Cap. But yeah. So he climbs yeah, it. El Cap. It's, like, <laughs> it's it's crazy how he climbs it and stuff like that. But it's it's really good though. It's crazy. Yeah. There's that. There's a bunch of other like inspiring uh rock climbing documentaries, I guess I could shoot you over. That oh, are for sure. probably gonna be that'll make you like sweat and you just be like, What the fuck? No, yeah. yeah. I interesting. The closest I've done to rock climbing was like um, you know, I'm pretty sure you've been to a bunch of well, I've seen sometimes you would post it's like those like uh 
places where they kind of have like the the setup so it's like like a like a rock wall mm-hmm. and they tie you up and whatnot so i did that with uh was it the posse group i remember we went mm-hmm. with our mentor oh my gosh bro now think about it. we're tied up right yeah i'm sweating yeah. i'm not even i'm like barely halfway i'm like why do people do this right. like it's so high it's so right. scary but then, You're like, when like, you get to the top... Why do you turn Mario halfway? <laughs> <laughs> when I get scared, when I get scared, I turn it to Mario. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I guess, at least for me, no, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm totally wrong. But for right. me, once I got to the top and you hit, like, this buzzer, eh, and then they release you down, I mm. felt like, whoa, that felt good. Yeah. Like, I freaking scaled this, bro. Yeah, it wasn't uh-huh. that hard, but I was like, I did it. Like, I, I pushed yeah. myself. Over my fear, to, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna reach the top, not be a weenie, and just mm-hmm. eh, and then get, come back down. Um, but yeah, no, that that was that's my only experience. Whoever go try to scale a real wall, uh, mm-hmm. no, because I'm still a weenie. So, right. But I mean, you, you could wanna... still be tied. You could still be tied in like that. <laughs> I, mean, I went. I went rock climbing like uh, on <laughs> Sunday, and we were so like that rope climbing, obviously because with rope so like we do that and it's i don't know like i have like, this weird mindset because i've been doing it so often this past yeah. year is like i just fully trust it like it's a blind trust like i'm Damn, just like if i fall that's... it's gonna catch me. <laughs> that's just fall. how i am like that's why and i think yeah. like what's crazy about it is like it's also so like i'll i'll segue into the alex honnold point that i'm trying to make is yeah i had much thought about this but yeah so it's like <laughs> it, it, it's funny because like when people when i talk to people like that don't rock climb like and i'm like telling them like i really love it like it's just like giving me mm-hmm. so much like much to focus on and it makes me work out and it adds like this extra things like if i want to rock climb i have to drive somewhere to hike and like see the scenery and like make sure the rock is fine and then eventually i go with friends because they probably know the area better and they can like help me so it's like it becomes more than just me going to rock climb Mm -hmm. it becomes like planning a trip hiking maybe camping hanging out with friends climbing together fishing It, it just it keeps going on and on about things that eventually circle around climbing that i think that's why i really like it but going back to the the scary part is like i just blindly trust me falling that the rope is going to catch me and like whoever's belaying me which is a person that is yeah. like pulling the rope right yeah, yeah whoever's doing that talking about, bro yeah, yeah. i've yeah. seen yeah. enough youtube right. videos okay. bro okay Please. whoever's belaying me i just <laughs> full full trust i'm just like they're yeah. gonna catch me i'm fine i'm just gonna go as hard as i can the crazy thing about it is like alex honnold does free soloing so he does no rope. Yeah, no and bad. Yeah. It's like, it makes sense that he could get to a level of comfort to be like, I've done this enough without falling with rope that I can probably do it without a rope. And it's funny because like, I've seen it. I've seen that documentary so many times where there's a, there's a quote, I think Tommy Caldwell says is like, people that are hearing him do it that don't rock climb are saying like, wow, that's kind of crazy. That's nuts. But people that know what he's doing and rock climb, they're looking at him like a fucking insane, bro. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Like for me to get in that much confidence to be able to say, like, I'm gonna climb this rock a year, one full year of rope climbing and try to figure out one sequence, like one way of getting from bottom to top, and I'll do that for the whole year. And then in this new year, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna use the rope this time because I've done it so many times. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's insane. Oh. Like, I'm just going to do it without a rope this time because the last X amount of times I've done it without a rope and I haven't, with the rope and I haven't fallen, what's the difference without me yeah. having, like, no rope and no one there to support me? Like, fucking crazy. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's at a level where you just have full faith in your ability. That's, yeah, it's that's it's like, just yeah. like practice. Like we talking about practice, bro. That yeah, practice. practice. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about practice, <laughs> bro. He, it's it's crazy, but but yeah, yeah. I really like rock climbing. Circling it all back. No, yeah, it's that's cool. And 
that's the thing. Like, say you have, you know, if I fall, like the rope's gonna get me, right? That's I think mm-hmm. what stops me from doing like anything that involves heights. Like, I'll get on roller coasters, right? But even then, mm-hmm. you know, I know it's probably not as intense freaking climbing a wall, a rock, mm-hmm. but I have this thing where it's like I'm gonna fall. Yeah, like for sure. There's no doubt I'm gonna yeah. fall. Like not yeah. like oh you know the rope's gonna catch me. Like no, I'm gonna fall. Like the rope's yeah. gonna snap. I'm gonna be like ah, <laughs> like why did I do this? Yeah. And then right. like, it's not even gonna right. be like a cool boom when it hit the ground. It's gonna be like a yeah. And and roller coasters, I'll get on right. And I'm like, well, you know, if this is the last thing. I'm probably gonna fall. This is the last yeah. thing I'm getting on. And I guess that's part of what drives me too as to why I'm getting on because I'm like, I like that feeling. Because I don't get yeah. it anywhere else, really, when it comes to, like, heights. Because I tell people I'm afraid of heights, but I'll still get You're really afraid coaster. of falling. It's, yeah, that's what it is. You don't like is, the yeah. feeling of falling, yeah. No. Which is crazy because, like, I don't even think about it. I'm just like, if I fall, <laughs> I fall. Insane. Like, I fall, I fall. It's okay. Like, and and it, I think it just goes back to me, like, having that blind trust. Like, yeah. I just fully trust the equipment's going to help me. <laughs> And my goal is to, like, if I fall, like, I fall, and I'm just going to yeah. get back up and try it again because I'm not going to get hurt. Oh, uh, That's what I, like, my brain tells me that. Yeah. It's like, I can just fall. Like, someone's going to catch me. And, like, so, like, so there's rope climbing, and then there's other thing called bouldering where it's rope climbing is more endurance, and it is hard. But bouldering is, like, a shorter distance with just the hardest move possible. Yeah. And that you don't use a rope, but you use mats or like crash pads and again i will just blindly trust the crash pads like i just feel in my mind i'm safe like i am like yeah. okay which is it's ridiculous because i've heard people tell me that that's ridiculous but i'm not i'm not like going at a level that i'm like super impressive but yeah. i guess to still have like that trust i guess is is, is interesting wow yeah. damn I want to, you know, I want to get to that level. Actually, I have a question now. So let's say for some reason, one day, right? You've been training, uh-huh. you've been working, you've been practicing, uh-huh. and you want to free climb, right? Or was it free solo, right? Free soloing. Free solo, yeah. That's like no rope, because I know no I saw rope. an interview, yeah, where he he talked about how there's a difference between free soloing, and I think it was free climbing or something like that. Yeah. Because I think free climbing, you still have like a rope to at least hold yourself for a second. Yeah, free climbing or sport climbing is. So top roping, or yeah, there's like different things. So rope climbing yeah. in general, you have trad or traditional, sport mm-hmm. free, sport or free climbing, and then you have top roping. So top roping is you set an anchor on the top, and it's kind of like someone pulling you up. That's what mm-hmm. it feels like. You feel tension on the rope. Free climbing and sport climbing is you have these things called um, like bolts along the way, and mm-hmm. you attach to these things called quick draws where you're able to quickly add the rope into like this carabiner or lock. So if you're going to fall, it just that's what it locks onto. Yeah. And you still have someone belaying you on the bottom, but it's just a different method. And so that's what free climbing is. You still have the rope and you still are going to fall, but yeah. you'll have like something to catch you. Yeah. Free soloing is no Dude, rope. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's just no like Spider-Man no just catch. straight going yeah. Yeah. But okay, so let's say wh- I mean, would you ever consider it free soloing no, a wall? No, Never. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> There's this other thing. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I'm ever at a point where I'm that confident in my ability. Maybe yeah. like if I if I were to really train and I yeah. was really dedicated and I got like sponsorship or whatever, maybe I might consider it. But <laughs> I don't think right now I'm not. Yeah. Not no, free yeah. But there's this other thing called highballing when you're bouldering it's set to like a a decent height like maybe the, a set a, like the size of a, a one-story house is a boulder right high balling is another like a two-story house and there's this zone and there's this area where you get it's called the no fall zone where it's like even if you do like before if you're only climbing a boulder that's like the size of a one-story house you could fall and the crash pad to help. It might hurt a little bit, but the most you'll get is a sprained ankle, maybe like a knee pain here and there. It's not as bad. If you're <laughs> climbing a high ball, there's a point where you can't fall anymore. You can't fall because if you fall, no matter what happens, you're just it's gonna get hurt. Like you'll fake. Yeah. Like it's no amount of a padding will save you. Yeah. So 
I don't know if I'm willing to do that. It sounds kind of gnarly because yeah. there's just there's just some bolt there's just some problems like out there that look really cool to try out and i just like wish i was maybe strong enough to attempt it but it's just insane yeah yeah man and the reason i was asking is because if you ever do do something um would you let me film it i would like to shoot your journey yeah that'd be cool to my I death think- <laughs> no that's the thing too that's the thing because i know in the behind the scenes i don't know if they mentioned in the documentary itself but in the behind yeah. the scenes clip that i saw he talks about that there's a there's a part of the sequence when he's going up El Cap where he mm-hmm. wanted nobody there, nobody filming yeah. him, because he said that that was a part that more than likely if he screwed up, that he would fall. And he said yeah. that uh, having people, the idea of people watching him, like whether it was a camera or his homies, possibly watching him die added pressure, which would make him nervous. So he said, right. I'd rather have no one there. So it's like, and they show that for a portion that – they're kind of on radio, just kind of like mm-hmm. waiting to hear waiting. from him. Yeah, they're yeah. like, okay, we have to wait. Because if he dies, then we'll know, obviously, because of the amount of time it takes for him to, like, if he hasn't hit us up, then more than likely yeah. that means he fell. So it's like, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah. so, but I'm thinking yeah, no. like, but again, there's that confidence. It's like, look, there's a possibility I could die. But, yeah. you know, just stay out of the way. I'm probably going to make it. It's like, yeah. what, bro? That's <laughs> wild. You could die, yeah. but you're like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make I'm it. Just pretty know, good. I'm like pretty it. okay. Just I'm like, good. I get I'm nervous okay. if you're there, but I'll meet you afterwards. Yeah, it's like, yeah. wow. But That's so, insane. I'm asking because if you ever do want to do it, let's say, God forbid, you right. fall and, you know, you, you die. Would you right. still want me to put it out? Maybe. Uh-huh. There's just not that point, though. Just no, not you're not going to be like, oh, this is when he falls. Yeah. <laughs> just like, there he goes. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> now, I just, I just visualize it, like, fading to black. Or and no, just like, like, oh, you know, this is the moment he knew. <laughs> he fucked up. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like uh, the Hector Benitez, you know, 2030, 1995. Yeah. And then it's just like, dang, that's it. Yeah, I mean, because I always wonder, like, I don't uh, again, I don't know if they say I, that's why I gotta watch it because I've been wanting to, and I know won the Oscar as well. I gotta really watch good. it because I don't know if he said or whether or not, like, if he died, whether they could still put it out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's that's that's I mean, even then, that's even if he says yes, like, that's so weird and so tough. That's a lot, dude. Yeah. To go back and edit all of that, <laughs> yeah, and knowing like this uh, is the moment when he's gonna die, like, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, so yeah, I just wanted to know in case you know something. No, again, yeah, no, not dude, taking I away. Think, I don't think I ever want to free solo. I'm if I ever want to highball and like that's that's a journey on its own. I pro- I will yeah. hit you up and be like, okay. bro, I'm, I'm attempting some shit. All right, yeah. and if you know if you do, you know you get hurt, something okay. worse. I can I can still put it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, it'll be a Studio Thirty Seven Couch Potatoes TV production. Sounds um, good. <laughs> we need the views. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but dang yeah, dude. dude i i want to go longer but i'm sure you're busy and i know i have to go freaking eat because i'm a fatty and haven't eaten yet oh my god but, it's not even like that but dude oh, we're okay. all, shoot we almost hit two hours or at least that's what it says yeah? here on the okay. freaking timing thing but i don't want to talk too much because i know we have so many more stories to tell i know i'm sure we when we so think much about to talk about we have so much, you know, but, um, but dude, I appreciate you being on here, man. Not letting me be by myself. Uh, of course. <laughs> talking to my, dude, this, you, you know what you should do if you're ever on alone podcast, just like, or alone episodes, just like hit me up and we'll just like get to this again. Cause I know you, you'll just be like, you sh- you know what you should do? You should like, if you know, you're going to be on by yourself day of, just tell me and I'm most likely will be free. All right. I just like, you know. I'll come in uh, as like so that way you're not alone <laughs> unless you like your alone shit. I mean, <laughs> who you? Who you, bro? I, I mean, I've no got. Issue. I'm able to do it, but it, it does. It feels weird at a certain point because you're like yeah. talking naturally. Yeah, you're talking yeah. naturally. You expect a reaction, but it's like no right. one's there. So what the heck am I talking to? Mm-hmm. Um, and you can kind of see on camera when I'm like. I wait. I'm like, oh, wait, no, nobody's here. So, I mean, they keep talking. <laughs> um, um, but, yeah, bro, man, I appreciate you, man, taking the time. Of course, you know, to of speak. course. 
so for those of you watching, surprise guest, you know, one for the books. I mean, so you officially have made your second appearance on Cows with Tatum. Um, but yeah, bro, it's 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 great to hear from you. It's great to see you again. You know, a lot of big stuff is happening. Um, good stuff, you know, in our lives, and hopefully we get to meet up again soon. Cause it's been a Man. minute. It's been a hot minute. Yes. And but yeah, bro, thank you. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, do you want? You have anything you want to put up on you know, uh, social media? Anything in there you want to shout out? We can link it below. I don't know. It's up to you. Yeah, I guess we can link. It. It'd just be like the climbing thing. If they wanted to see some of that, okay. I guess yeah. they could. Other than that, I I I don't know. My uh, like, what was it? My personal Instagram is fucking lame. I haven't posted on that in like <laughs> months <laughs> in months. So people probably think like this guy's a, this this guy's guy. a scammer or something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's like the only thing. That's the only thing I got. Yeah, yeah. No, you never know. Maybe this will be the start of your journey. So that maybe in two years, two years time, journey, that'd be kind of cool. We that'd get be sick. I'll make Jay climb and get huh. the freaking aerial shots and stuff. I'll be on the ground, okay. the guy with the radio. Jay, yeah. how's the luck? Just waiting. Right. <laughs> Just waiting. Okay. I go to the monitor. Great shot, right. Jay. I love, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, no, yeah, I think, you know, hopefully soon we can do something. Because it's been a minute. That'd be sick. Um, but for those of you watching, we'll, you know, follow his journey. His rock climbing, strength building, uh, booty shaking journey. I don't know why I just added that last part. But, you know, thank you guys for watching. Oh, also, uh, big, big thing. Help us reach 100 subscribers before the year ends. We, I think, are only 14 away from reaching that goal. 14 away. So, Hector, if you have friends that don't really watch Everyone, YouTube. It, this is unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Yeah, unsubscribe. <laughs> oh, God. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even my little sister, she was like, do you want me to make lots of accounts so I can subscribe for you? I was like, that is super sweet, but it's cheating a little bit. And then I'll right. feel a little sad too. So, but it's okay. <laughs> but for those of you watching, um, subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Heck, tell your friends and family to subscribe. We're so Got close. You. We want to reach it right before the year ends. Even if it's like mm -hmm. at 1159, mm -hmm. uh, December 31st, like screw it. Bing, 100. That'll be hype. That'll be so dope. Um, what will happen if we reach 100? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe the, I don't know. Maybe nothing will happen. But we'll have 100 subscribers. We, we right. made that goal. <laughs> we made it. That's right. our goal. Um, but yeah, and once we reach that, don't forget there's a giveaway. Actually, you can also be part of that. It's a t-shirt. Um, I like make it pop up. Bing. Like right now. Bing. Like in this corner there. Yeah. There. Um, I'll put a bunch like. Okay. Yeah. All over the place. All right. it's the only, this is, we'll hopefully one day we'll have merch and whatnot, but this is the only shirt that we had made for the team ourselves. Just one? It's just one. It's one. No, no. We took our own shirt, but this is one that we made extra to give away for okay. a lucky uh, listener or, or viewer. So once mm -hmm. we reach 100, so um, hopefully in the new year, we'll be giving that shirt away to whoever subscribed. And that could be you. That could be you, Hector, as well. Um, I might just give it to you on the side. No, actually, no, okay. I won't do that. You know, I want to be fair. And no, nah, you should not, do that. I should do that? All right. <laughs> forget, forget your fans. Forget I'm my fans, fan. yeah. But, yeah. But yeah, dude, uh, you can win something. All you have to do is subscribe. So easy. Uh, other than that, any final words, um, Hector, for those, you know, the year's ending and whatnot? Just hope the new year, everyone stays happy, pure. <laughs> Keep your booty shaking. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I, like that. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Have you um, seen that guy? <laughs> that dude's a legend. <laughs> Mr. Hotspot. <laughs> Do me out, bro. Come on, no, my bad, my bad. Go ahead, Come go on. ahead. No, no, no. Reel it back in, reel it back in. Reel it back in. In all seriousness, you know, we'll be we'll be releasing another episode before the year ends. You know, it should be next week, same day, Wednesday. I know I've been off, this, and I'll take this on me. You know, I've been busy. I've been trying to keep up with things. But you know, hope soon enough, you know, content will be coming back regular as usual. Um, but yeah, subscribe, turn notifications on. We miss y'all. We hope y'all are staying safe. Um, hopefully you guys have a good Christmas. Merry Christmas to those of you. 
uh, who are spending it with your families or friends, or even if you're working, because I know a lot of people work on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and whatnot. So hopefully you with your work family, or if you're just lonesome, screw it. Watch Elf. Make you feel better. It's a great movie. Um, we wish you happy holidays. Shout out to Gilly the Answer. Shout out to Zendaya. Shout out to Kira Costner. Shout out to Angel Rose Music. Um, shout out to Will Ferrell for playing Buddy and Elf. And yeah, dude. As always, stay fat with the PH. We love y'all. Stay tuned. And God bless. Peace out.